Welcome back. Following along with the last room we have just gone through Linux privilege escalation. In the last video, we discussed four techniques to escalate privileges in Linux operating system. We have gone through exploiting services or running processes under the root. And also we have exploited or demonstrated how to take advantage of weak file permissions in the etc shadow and etc password. Today I'm going to go over the shell escape and the environment variables. How can you use these two concepts to escalate your privileges in or while you are auditing or doing pen testing for the Linux operating system? All right, so the first one will be about sudo shell escape sequence. So without going through the task and reading everything, let's demonstrate everything practically easier and more neat. So basically we log into the machine we are the user or the user at the Debian. So we list, we type ID to see who we are. Um, now, the shell escape sequence or the sudo escape shell escape sequence is demonstrated or it can be discovered by running sudo dash L. So by running sudo dash L, you can see we have several binaries we can run as root. and uh, if you have, if are following my videos, or if in general, if you do CTF more often, or if you do pen testing, you will uh, notice that one of the methods to see privilege escalation opportunities is by issuing sudo l and see what are the binaries that we can use at the root. So this is called shell escape sequence. So basically, we have several binaries. Um, the next step is to see how we can use these binaries to gain or to convert, uh, to, to manipulate the function of the binary into giving us a root shell. So basically, we have to see how we can do that. Now, basically, in order to know how to do that, we have to go to GTFO bins and see if these binaries or one of these binaries can be found under sudo. So let's use GTFO bins. Let's take an example. Let's say iftop so we search for iftop we see here we have the functions that we can abuse our shell sudo and limited suit in our case we need to see sudo here so to take shell here under so if the binary is allowed to run as super user by sudo which is the case it doesn't drop the elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system escalate or maintain privileged access so just type sudo if top and bin sh. Let's try it. sudo if top. Okay. And then the next is to type bin sh. Let's copy that directly. Seems like we failed, let me exit again. So bin sh. So in that case, it doesn't work. Let's try another one. Find. Find is more common actually. Let's see find. So for sudo, if the binary is allowed, so we have to execute this command. If you type id, as you can see, we are the root user. Let's exit out of the root user and return back to the normal user. Let's see nano, search for nano, sudo. So for sudo, if the binary is allowed the same cliche, sudo nano. Okay. So type sudo nano and then control R, control X. As you can see, command to execute, we switch to command mode and then we paste this command. Okay. 
ID. As you can see, we are the root user. Not so neat and tidy, but that's how we can do it with Nano. Exit. No. Back to the user. sudo dash l. Let's see with VAM, the popular text editor. VAM. As you can see, we have many functions to abuse. So let's see the sudo function. So several options to execute with VAM. So let's try the first one. ID the root user. You can try the other uh, binaries, but that's the concept. Just see what are the binaries that you can run under root user and see if you can abuse the function of sudo uh, using GTFO bins. This is called shell escape sequence. Let's exit back to the normal user. I'm not able to quit. Take the password. Okay. Answers. How many programs is user allowed to run via sudo? Switch back sudo dash L. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven. One program on the list doesn't have a shell escape sequence on GTFO bins. What? Which is it? One program on the list doesn't have a shell escape sequence. Let's see. So on the list, we found shell escape sequence for if top, find, nano, vm. Probably there is for man, awk, less. Let's see if there is it for FTP. And there is. Nmap, Nmap of course there is, Apache 2, so that's it, Apache 2 doesn't have shell escape sequence, so we answer with Apache 2. Consider how you might use this program with sudo to gain root privileges without a shell escape sequence. Okay, no answer is required. Next one is pseudo environment variables. Okay. Now, let me switch, let me clear the screen. Now let's go to home, user tools, uh, cd2 sudo and now let's go over we have two c codes preload and library path so what's the purpose for these two codes let's type sudo dash l one more time and let's take a look now at the above entries matching default entries for user on this host so we have ld library path and we have ld preload so basically ld preload or LDP actually loads a shared object when a program is run. So when you run any, any of these programs, there is a shared object that is created and run by LD preload. Now, what is the purpose of LD library path? LD library path performs similarly, but with directories. So basically, it provides a list of directories where shared libraries are searched for. So if you want to use ld library path you're gonna use a directory if you want to use ld library preload you're gonna use shared object why we're saying this uh, in this method or in this task we will pe perform or demonstrate how to uh, perform privileged escalation using environment variables
Now since we run sudo dash l and we found that, as you can see we have these environment variables, we're gonna use them. Uh, let's take first, uh, let's take advantage first of the ld preload. So for ld preload, we need first a shared object. If you ls here, the author has uploaded a ready C code from which we can create the shared object. Let's go over the C code here, preload dot C, cat preload. So as you can see, this is C code. It starts with unset environment. So why, as you can see, we have unset environment. What's the purpose of this command here or this line of code? Basically, we are clearing the current values of the LD preload. Clearing the, the values of the current of the current value of the LD preload allows us to just insert our shared object and yeah, to take it for to take it take advantage for it of it. Uh, the next one here we set the user ID all zeros, which corresponds to the root, and then we execute shell. So now let's create a shared object out of the C code, and the shared object will be used or will be stored. Yeah, will be used by the LT preload, and then we run a program and let the program use the shared object we have just created. So GCC dash F P I C and then dash we define shared object start files define the path most probably if you're doing this uh, in a production environment for a client you're gonna choose temp because temp most probably you will have a write privilege in the temp directory so preload name it preload dot so define the directory where you hold the code which is, yeah, let me write it manually, it's better. I don't want to run into mistakes. sudo preload.c ls, now go to temp. As you can see, now we have the shared object. Now, let's run sudo dash l one more time. The, ne the next step is to run one of these programs, okay, and let the LD preload load our shared object to get the shell. So let's try. Um, let me try with Apache 2. Since Apache 2, there is no GTFO bins, there is no uh, shell escape for that binary in the GTFO bins. So probably if you are uh, auditing a machine and you only find the Apache 2 that can be run as sudo, you can't use the shell escape sequence method. You're gonna need to use the uh, environment variable method. So, sudo and then ld preload equal the directory which holds our shared object. So, and then the program name is Apache 2 id and you are the root user successfully exploited. Now, what about LD library path? Let's exit out of this, back to the normal user. If we want to exploit the Apache 2 using the LD library path, we have to first create a shared object that is identical to one, to at least one of the shared objects used legally by Apache 2. To see what are the shared objects used by Apache 2, run LDD and the full path for the binary. SBIN, I guess, Apache 2. So we have these shared objects used by the Apache 2. So all we have to do is to create one shared object that match, whose name matches one of these uh, libraries and then place it in a directory where we will use that directory for the LD library path as a path for the library. So how to create now the shared object for this case? Let's go to, let's go back to uh, this directory. So 
So now we will use this code, library path. Cat library path. This is the code. As you can see, first we clear the any to clear all the values from the LD library path, and the same method we followed with the first binary, we do the same in this in this code. So let's create now the shared object. GCC dash O define where we will hold the shared object temp and then choose one choose a name for our shared object so in my case I tried the LB crypt or library crypt and worked now then we define shared and then the directory which holds the code See now we have created the shared object. Now let's use now the shared object as a, a replacement for the legal one. So sudo ld library path equal temp define here define the directory only and then the, type the name of the application id and you are the root user. So, in the next video, we will go over cron jobs and use them as a way to escalate the privileges. So that's it for today, and see you in the next video.